The country of Nepal is an extremely unique and fascinating location. Now, more and more people these days are continuing to learn even more about the country, but there are still many misconceptions about Nepal that actually exist. Hey guys, welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and now for this episode, I'm looking at 10 of the biggest lies, misconceptions, and stereotypes about Nepal that you need to know right now. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. The lie at number 10 is that nobody eats beef in Nepal. So of course, you know, in the Hindu tradition, a cow is considered sacred. So Hindus avoid killing cows or eating beef as much as possible. But this isn't always true in Nepal. There are some people that live in smaller villages, yes, from older generations that may be a little bit more strict, but it looks like the more modern generations are not as strict. So in Nepal's capital, Kathmandu, you can find many amazing burger spots there as well. The light number nine is that the year 2015 destroyed the country. The earthquakes of April and May 2015 in Nepal killed thousands of people, unfortunately, and it injured tens of thousands. Also, it left many more thousands completely homeless. So of course, these losses had a big impact on the country as well as people's perceptions of the country. However, the scenes from the destruction that were broadcast to different places around the world didn't necessarily represent the entire country on a whole. Tourism, hotels, restaurants, and even trekking lodges and guide agencies, they still operated pretty strong after this. Not to minimize the 2015 earthquakes at all because that was definitely devastating but I mean it didn't end the country. Here's another lie at number eight, all Nepalis climb mountains, really? Okay, so this can be pretty annoying for Nepalis to hear, but when people go and visit, they often think of climbing Mount Everest. But for the people that live in Nepal, they don't just wake up and are like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go climb the mountain because that's what I do. No, 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 actually climbing a mountain takes a lot of training. But here's the thing to also keep in mind, the country isn't just known for its mountains. As a matter of fact, there's a whole lot of dips and flatlands across Nepal. So many Nepalis don't even grow up or live near the mountains at all. All. As a matter of fact, it's even very unlikely that Nepalis have even climbed a mountain themselves. Nepal is a Buddhist country? That's a lie at number seven. So this is something that I even thought like personally before I started doing a lot more research into Nepal. So Kathmandu has long been the center of Buddhist pilgrimages, right? But there's a group of people called the Nirwari people of the Kathmandu Valley that practice like a pseudo Buddhist Hindu religion. And even if you go to like more of the Western part of Kathmandu, you'll start to realize more that Hinduism is actually the dominant religion in Nepal. So contrary to popular belief, the percentage of people who follow Hinduism is 81.34% and Buddhism sits at 9.04%. So by far, Hinduism, yes, is a dominant religion, not Buddhism. Oh, now this next one can get a lot of people's blood boiling, especially with the current situation with Nepal and India right now. But there's a lie that Nepal is a part of India. People still believe this. So it's almost like saying that, you know, Mexico is part of the United States. That could be very, very, very triggering for a lot of people. Maybe not necessarily the same, but that may give you an idea. For those of you who are not necessarily familiar with what's going on with Nepal and India right now. But in any case, this is a huge misconception. And you know, many tour companies, they actually sell packages that group India and Nepal together. And you know, the countries do share a little bit of history, so it can be a little confusing for some people. But you know, despite both of these countries having a strong Hindu culture, Nepal is its own separate country. India doesn't have their hands in Nepal and have a say in how they run their country. It's not a subsect of India. Just had to clear that one up. So guys, we looked at five lies so far about Nepal and we got five more to go. But before I jump into the last five, just a reminder guys to leave a like on this episode if you're enjoying it so far. Also, it really helps more people see our videos. Now, if this is your first time here though to FTD Facts, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. We post videos Daily. So you'll always be learning something new about the different countries, cultures, people, religions, and more in our world. Now for the lie number five, Whoa. Nepal is dangerous. 
So yeah, many people are concerned about the natural disasters in Nepal since, you know, the earthquakes that happen over the years have been pretty devastating. But while, you know, earthquakes and landslides and things like floods and hurricanes and tornadoes and all of that happen in different parts of the world, this seems to be a stigma that a lot of people attach to Nepal only. But on top of it potentially being dangerous because of the natural disasters, you know, there's things like getting mugged or kidnapped. Of course, those are possibilities in different countries around the world as well. Oftentimes people still ask the question, oh my God, are you traveling to Nepal by yourself? Aren't you scared? Isn't it dangerous? Well, you see, according to nationmaster.com, crime rates are much lower in many cases in Nepal than they are in the United States. But for some reason, a lot of people aren't gonna be asking the question, oh my God, you're traveling to the United States by yourself? Aren't you scared? So can you get robbed and beat up in Nepal as well as other bad stuff happen to you? Of course. Well, like I mentioned, crime rates are a lot lower in many cases than they are in the United States. Now moving on to lie number four, everybody lives off the grid. So this lie is perpetuated because a lot of the blog photos and photos in magazines show small towns and villages where people live very simple lives. But what we don't really see as much is modern day Nepal where we have young people, young adults just living lives. You know, they have smartphones, they post on social media. Yes, there's electricity there in Nepal as well. Wi-Fi coverage is also there. Oftentimes when people think of Nepal, it's kind of like everybody lives in remote locations. No, in many parts of Nepal, it is very modern as well. Number three is also a very common one associated with travel in Nepal. So the lie is that a Sherpa is a travel guide. Now the word Sherpa, if you break it down, has become a job description. And the Sherpa job is really to set up camp as well as manage people who are trekking. And all in all, just being responsible for the safety of those that are trekking. But you see the word Sherpa originally meant people from the east. East, and it's actually pronounced Sharwa by the Sherpa people themselves. So in actuality, Sherpa is an ethnic group and a large percentage of the indigenous people, they live in the mountainous regions of Nepal. Lie number two. Mount Everest is only in Nepal? Well, you see, the fact of the matter is, guys, Mount Everest is located on the border between Tibet and Nepal in the Himalayas. So on the Nepali side, Mount Everest is located in the Sargamatha National Park in the Sulukumbu district. Now on the Tibetan side, Mount Everest is located in the Tingri County, and it's in an area that China considers to be an autonomous region and part of the People's Republic of China. That's a whole other thing with the Tibetan Tibet and China thing. But yes, again, Nepal isn't the only place that Mount Everest is located. To think of Sherpa as someone as a mountain guide, well, that's a misrepresentation of Westerners who first came to Nepal and who wanted to climb this. this and finally, at number one, the biggest lie in this episode is Nepalis look Chinese. This is also something that can trigger Nepalis like crazy and it can just be like straight up offensive. But here's the thing guys, Nepali people don't just look like Chinese people. So Nepalis are very diverse. And if you take a look at the map, you'll see that Nepal, yes, it does border China, Tibet slash China. And of course, when you live that close to a country, you're probably going to mix a little bit of the culture and the environment and the people in but also you'll find various racial groups in the country like there's Aryans of course you'll find like the Tibetan people that have more of the typical Chinese look if you want to call it that as well as there's mixed races of course. Nepal also borders India in the south so depending on the region of Nepal that you visit people can look totally different. So it is a big fat lie to say that Nepalis look like this, like the Chinese, that's it, period. No, Nepalis look like a whole lot of a whole lot. You can't just put their look into one clump, you know, and be like, that's the Nepalese look. All right, guys, so that wraps up this episode on the 10 biggest lies about Nepal. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one and really learned something new. Be sure to leave your thoughts and comments down below. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, I'll be leaving you with a recommended video. It's gonna be at the end screen, so tap that annotation once I get out of here. My social media links are below in the video description section as well, so you can follow me over there. And I'll see you guys next time in the next episode.